I think it's going to look like an incredibly annoyed middle class white guy. <laughs> to be honest, I think the, the idea of the, the, the next major radical is going to be, you know, a uh, highly, skilled, highly skilled engineer in Pakistan or, or Occupy is perhaps um, is creating an other, you know, with a capital O. It's creating this other that's over there, and we can go and shoot them, or we can arrest them. I think the major threat at the moment is that we're in, the, we're in a very interesting interstitial moment in politics and economics. And really, the people I'm most scared of over the next few years will be the computer engineer in the suburbs who can't pay his mortgage anymore and freaks out. Um, like I said, you know, about London, uh, we, have, we have a huge, big distraction in 10 days' time. You know, for f four weeks of the Olympics, and then there's a couple of weeks to get over the hangover, then there's the Paralympic Games, which are going to be awesome as well, and then a couple of weeks after that, it's going to start to get really cold. And because of the economic policies and so on, because of the general um, sort of atmosphere, uh, and contrasted against things like um, bankers' bonuses and so on, which is a huge social issue in the UK, I can easily see not, not the Occupy movement, not anonymous, not, not sort of radical teenagers with silly haircuts, but your very highly skilled 45-year-old who doesn't know how they're going to pay next month's food bill um, and who gets cut up in traffic by a guy in a Mercedes and just loses it. And it's that sort of thing. It, because of the massive interconnectedness in the, of the world and the, and the massive complexity of all of the systems mean that, uh, mean that anybody with any form of, of intelligence and a sudden loss of social responsibility, a sudden loss of that social contract, uh, could do in, immense damage. And what we're seeing, I think, and in, in certainly in, the, in, the, in Europe, is, is a, a, a weakening of that social contract because we're seeing that the social contract doesn't apply to certain members of our own societies. At this moment in time, it's the financial sector. Um, and other times, it'll be something else. But when you start to see the social contract um, dissolving, that, to me, is a bigger threat than, than global jihad. Much bigger. Much, much, much bigger. Um, it, isn't, it isn't the seven, seven bombers. It's, it's actually the, it's the unibomber who's learned from stuff. Right? It's, it's, it's the... It's the guy who goes postal, but on a, on a, glo but on a proper scale, mm -hmm. rather than with automa automatic weaponry. Mm -hmm. That, to me, I think is a, is a, that's a bigger national security threat than, than, than any form of you know, dubious drug dealing cartel in Afghanistan. Much bigger. And like I said, you know, it, it, is, it isn't hyperbole at all, I think, to say that Barclays fixing LIBOR was a form of warfare. Because it absolutely was. Whether you, whether you count it as being you know, under the Geneva Convention or anything like that as being a form of warfare, its effect was much the same. They did a thing which radically made life worse for millions of people. And they did it on purpose. And it's, an, it's, it's a very, the fine line between those things, I think, is, is those are the new frontiers of national security, not brown people in another country a thousand miles away. 5,000 miles away. The real national security issue is the fact that we live in a massively complex society and there are parts of that society who seem to be against everybody else. And it's the reaction against that that I'm worried of.